Hey guys, and welcome back to the Turdford Show. All right, so this problem that we're kind of taking a look at today, it looks a little like a chase problem, but it's not. Um, we do have two people chasing each other, but usually when you hear me say the word a chase problem, I'm usually referring to a question where we need to use like delta x equals xf minus xi in relation to each other. This one we're not really going to have to, and I'll explain why in a second. It says we've got a hockey player standing on his skates on a frozen pond when the opposing player moving with a uniform speed of 12 meters per second skates by. And you may be looking at this going, well, what's a uniform speed? He's an ice hockey player. They wear uniforms. Come on, you silly. All right, I'm sorry for that joke. Uh, uniform speed is just another way of saying he's moving with a constant speed. So anyway, he skates by the pocket. There's a little three second delay. And that's the part I think that probably throws a lot of people. A three second delay. And then the first player makes up his mind to chase him. And he accelerates at four meters per second square. So let's do something. Let's look at first the player that's sitting at rest. Player number one. So it says player number one is sitting at rest. I'm going to say velocity initial of player one is equal to zero meters per second and yes he will have some final player one velocity but the problem doesn't ask that now however we could find that and let's do our little basic a x and t and it tells me that he has an acceleration of four meters per second square uh, x i do not know t i do not know that's actually what the problem asks us to find you may be wondering, uh, hey, Turdford, do I need to use the delta x in there? And you, technically, you should use it every time. Don't be lazy like me. But anyway, uh, it's going to come out to not really matter in this problem, and I'll show you why. There's another player, player two, and I want you to watch this. Player two is going to come skating by player one. So he's already moving, and so he's skating and got a nice little head start somewhere along the way before a little head start along the way before the other player even tries to catch him there's two different ways of doing this problem but i'm going to do it the way i think is the easiest way to do it uh, we could actually work this problem where we figure like how far this player gets before the other guy moves and and then if we do it like that it will be a straight up chase problem uh, I'm just going to work it like this, though. I'm going to say that both players have an x initial of zero. I'm going to say the problem started the very second player two passed player one. And player two, notice something. Player two has a velocity, and notice how I'm writing it, of 12 meters per second. Not a velocity initial, not a velocity final. I just said he's got an average velocity of 12 because he's not speeding up or slowing down, so he's going to continue that. Now, what's also neat is, in terms of this problem, is we've got the X final is also going the way I'm doing it. The X final will be the same for both skaters, because they're going to catch each other. So that's one of the things we can kind of take into consideration there. And now, therefore, I'm not going to have to really do the delta X, just simply because my x initial and x final are the same. So I'm just going to say they both travel with the same displacement x, and that's going to kind of simplify things. So let's look at skater 2. <coughs> He's not accelerating. That means there's only one equation in the whole show that's really any good for this guy. Velocity for the skater 2 is equal to, let's see if we can kind of get this down is equal to just, I'm going to write x over <coughs> t2. And you may be wondering why, all right, I get why the x is the same. Realistically, that's an x final. I'm just not writing it. But why have I got two separate times? Well, remember, these guys skated for different amounts of time. Skater 2 skated three seconds more than the first guy skated. So we're going to have to take that into account in a second. Well, now let's look at something. We're looking at what we've got here, an X and T. 
we need to find an equation, a kinematic equation, if we go back to our initial list of equations, we need to find an equation that's got position and time in it for an accelerating object. <clears throat> well, that makes it pretty clear. There's only one from that choice that's actually got that list of options in there. So as we look at this, and again, I'm just going to write x instead of delta x. x is equal to v sub 0, 1 times time for our skater 1 plus 1 half a times time of skater 1 squared. And I've really went overkill because one of the things you should remember is that the velocity initial of skater 1 is 0, so all that's going to cancel out anyway. Now there's one more thing. We can't do this problem because we've actually got three unknowns. We don't know x, we don't know how long total skater 2 skated, and we don't know how long total skater 1 skated. But we do remember that skater 2 skated three seconds longer than skater 1. And now we've got our equation. So now the physics in this problem is over. All we've got at this point is an algebra question. So I'm going to solve this equation for x. I'm going to multiply both sides by t2. So I end up with v2 times t2. And I'll be honest, it would be easier to plug in numbers at this point, but I'm going to try and refrain from it. Uh, let's keep it kind of algebraic. So let's take this x, and now let's plug that into this equation. So we've got velocity average of skater 2 times the time of skater 2 is equal to, all that cancels, so 1 half of a t 1 squared. And now here's the thing, you're looking at this and you should be going, uh, we've got a t2 and a t1, we've still got two unknowns. Exactly, so that's why I'm going to now come over here and take this equation that's solved for t2, and I'm going to take that equation, and I'm going to substitute it in for t2 as well. So this is v2 average times t2, which is t1 plus 3, and we could continue to algebraic this, but I'm actually going to go ahead and plug in numbers. Hopefully, if you're watching this video, you can finish this problem if it's just algebra you were after. We know that velocity 2 was 12, so that's 12 times t1 plus 3 equals half of the acceleration, which was 4. So that's 2 t1 squared. And so distribute this, and we've got 12 times t1 plus 12 times 3 is 36 equals 2t1 square. Boom. And now you should be looking at this going, uh, wait a minute, I've got a square and not a square. Oh no, what am I going to do? Ah, simple. Just go with me. If you've got one variable as a square, same variable, no, there's not, just set up a quadratic. So 2t1 square, and this may be the first time in your physics course you've had to do this, end up with a quadratic, so I'm glad we did it here. Uh, I need to bring the 12 and the 36 over, so minus, I need everything on the same side, bring the 36 over as well, <coughs> and now you can see I've got a nice little quadratic set up, where the 2 is, if I can get my colors change again, there is my a value for my quadratic in terms of ax squared plus, hopefully you know your quadratic, bx, your general quadratic equation, plus c. And there's all my terms. And if you want to, you could do sing your quadratic song, x equals negative b plus or minus square root, b squared minus 4ac. All right, all the children, come on. All over to a... Or you could do like what I'm about to do, grab your Casio FX 115 calculator because it is so handy. Mode 5 equation and equation 3 is what I want. A is 2, B is negative 12, enter, and C is negative 
36. <coughs> Enter again, and I've got two answers. Actually, I only have one answer. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, my one answer that I've actually got is that T is equal to, let's see if we can pull this back out again, and I've lost it. Was it 8.2? T is equal to 8. <coughs> I'm sorry for coughing. 8.2 seconds. So we've got our value for time, and this is actually, I lost track, that is T1 that we've actually solved for. So we solved for T1, uh, that means T2, if you remember, is actually three seconds more. So if this is 8.2 seconds, then that means we've got a total of 11.2 seconds over here. So there is my T2 value. And now if we want to find what X was, we can go right back over to where we started. We know that V2 is 12, 12 meters per second times 11.2 seconds, obviously a little less than 144. Oops, I got to get my calculator back in normal mode. So 8.2 times 12, where did I get that? I mean 11.2. <laughs> The problems you make when doing videos times 12 is equal to 134.4 meters. So there is the total skating, which means this was a massive ice hockey rink. Anyway, guys, hope this one helps you kind of get this down. Long video, I know, but, you know, it's a little bit more complicated. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.